Uh, IBM is uh, a leading force in quantum technology. Um, it is a rapidly emerging technology that has the ability to solve uh, complex problems that uh, even uh, the classical supercomputers uh, cannot. Could you give us some examples? Sure, I'd be happy to. Well, uh, first of all, quantum computing is not going to replace classical computing, but it will augment classical computing. And I think it's important to recognize what everyone is driving for is uh, something that we call quantum advantage, which is uh, looking for those problems where quantum computing can, in fact, perhaps do things better or faster at a lower cost than classical supercomputers. There are several different use cases that uh, really provide potential value proposition and that would be, in fact, I think interesting to many of the people here. A couple of them would be, for instance, optimizing routes in shipping, uh, looking at more efficient routing and matching shipping capacity with demand in a more efficient and energy efficient way. Another area that shows great promise is in finance. There are um, many different approaches to quantum computing in financial applications. One of them is, for instance, in detecting fraudulent transactions. The quantum machine can detect certain features in data that the classical machine doesn't see and vice versa. So the two of them working together, in fact, have an enhanced performance, oftentimes by 500 basis points in certain example data sets that, that we've looked at. So shipping, finance, of course, pharmaceutical, chemistry, catalysis, uh, these are all areas of uh, great promise for quantum computing. The past year we had big steps in artificial intelligence, generative uh, AI. What role could uh, quantum computing play in the revolution of artificial intelligence? Yes, so as I mentioned, quantum machine learning is an example. Um, machine learning and uh, what is called a support vector machine is a, sort of a very fundamental element of uh, artificial intelligence, segregating data, classifying it, and quantum machines have uh, the potential to provide substantial speed up on certain types of data. Right now we're exploring the kinds of data sets that would provide a, uh, a substantial uh, uh, improvement using quantum kernels uh, as opposed to, say, classical machine learning. Um, some of this may well be applicable to artificial intelligence applications and um, another area is uh, matrix inversion. When um, uh, working in uh, very large linear uh, spaces where you need to optimize a large number of variables and again segregate data, quantum machines have a uh, potential and there are algorithms that provably show that there should be uh, a substantial speed up using quantum. Uh, how could a, uh, a small economy like Greece take advantage of uh, quantum technology, of the opportunities that uh, it gives? Uh, could it become a software technology hub maybe? Well. Greece has a tremendous uh, uh, talent in its people. One of the ubiquitous problems in quantum is a talented, trained workforce. And when I look at Greece and I look at the tremendous potential of its youth, of all of the talent you have here, Greece has been involved in science, engineering, and technology for well over 2,000 years. And as a result, uh, I should think that um, the capabilities of the Greek people and the youth here would be able to embrace quantum and contribute significantly to uh, quantum and quantum efforts 
Um, workforce is an issue for every country globally. And it's something that when I look at Greece, uh, uh, I would think that uh, software capabilities, the inherent mathematics and scientific capabilities, the English language is spoken here by most, I would say, the majority of people. Uh, that provides an automatic uh, 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 plug-in to the global quantum economy for Greece. Uh, and so I, I uh, would, would encourage that um, quantum needs to, uh, that, that Greece needs to get on the quantum racetrack and, and make the investment and have that available for uh, the workforce here. Uh, now, technology is changing rapidly for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see, uh, what w could we expect in 20 years from now? Mm. Um, is it something that um, uh, we should be excited about or should we be afraid of something? No, I, we look at the future as extremely exciting. You know, when, when you look back at how, say, far artificial intelligence has come, since the year 2000. Or you look at the development pace of just the internet or the web or digital computing um, and you see the progress made in 20 years. I think we will see uh, tremendous progress in quantum computing and, and we uh, really think that we will show by 2030 some terrific utilization and particularly those uh, industries I mentioned um, the the uh, the industries of uh, shipping, uh, in uh, electronics, in materials design, pharmaceuticals, machine learning, AI. I see all of those areas growing, and having um, substantial uh, uh, growth in, in their capabilities in the next ten or twenty years. So it's a very exciting future.